Ain't no living life in my pseudo. Ain't no living life in my pseudo. We going out tonight, and when my, you know, ain't no bedtime. You grown, spending them dimes. So Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Diara Show today. And today's topic is motherhood and self care during quarantine. Now, I know we've all had this unexpected time to spend together. And I think it's important now more than ever to not forget about ourselves, not to get, you know, all wrapped up in the day-to-day -day struggles of trying to navigate this whole new world that we're living in. So motherhood during self-quarantine uh, means a lot to me. And one of the ways that I try to practice self-care is to work on my routine, work on my scheduling. I definitely want to get better at those things. And I'm really excited to hear about what other mothers have to say about this. So we wear many hats. We are now teachers at home. We are now uh, chefs at home. We are now having to step up and be a better partner. You know, we wear many hats during this time. And I just want to know what you guys feel about these changing times. And today I have some very special guests and they'll be sharing with me their experiences uh, during quarantine and what they do for self-care. And we'll be right back. Got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. I'm New York City Health Commissioner Oxidis Barbo. As the city's doctor, I have an urgent plea on behalf of all New Yorkers stay home. When you go out, you risk contracting or spreading coronavirus to others. You put others at risk of serious illness and even death. When you do have to go out for essentials like groceries or medicine, try to keep at least six feet between yourself and others. By staying home, you save lives. Now today's guests are both mothers and entrepreneurs. Please welcome Jamila Murphy and Nubella Allison. Hi guys. Hey, how are you? Thank you for joining today. So excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for yeah. having me. Thank yeah. you. So now, in light of what's going on, mothers have to make sure we make ourselves the priority intentionally. So what did you first think when the pandemic first hit? Well, I'll go first. And uh, that was um a little bit overwhelmed because I was just thinking, how am I supposed to balance working from home and also homeschooling um, if I was going to continue to have a job or not? Um, so it was very overwhelming. And I knew I had to come up with a way to maintain a healthy relationship with myself. So I had to change everything around in order to make this my new norm. So I noticed you said you had to change everything around. So do you feel like you took more notice to your mental health and self-care uh, once the pandemic hit, or did you always practice those routines? So I always try to incorporate it. Um, I do feel like one must maintain um, a healthy relationship physically, mentally, um, and also socially. Um, so I knew that every aspect was going to be affected by us having to stay home all day. Um, no more going out, no more doing fun activities outdoors. Um, so it kind of opened my eyes more where I did more research into what are things that I can do at home with my children so that we all maintain mentally good health. Thank you. Now, Nubella, yes. I want to know when the pandemic first started, what went through your mind? What did you think you would have to do? And I know you have five kids. Yes. Correct? Yes. How did this affect you? Yeah. So it was definitely a big adjustment for me. I have five kids in every age bracket. So there were different things going on for each of them. And I had to really be able to pivot my strategy. I had a 
a very uh, regimented life and a routine that I had down packed. So it was really, you know, my mantra now um, is really being bent and not broken. So having to be flexible. Uh, I had to, you know, I had things in place and instead of just kind of uh, wiping the slate clean, uh, much like Jamila, I had to figure out what can I do differently, but still kind of maintain that same balance for myself and for my kids. So that was really the strategy that, that I took on, um, looking at what we wanted to keep in our lives and our, in our routines and figuring out ways to still do that in a, in a different way. So I think it's great that you had self-care routine practices before the pandemic hit, but lots of us didn't have a consistent schedule. I myself am not that great with scheduling and a consistent routine. So what advice could the both of you give to people that are, aren't great at scheduling? And Jamila, I'd like to start with you first. Um, so I typically don't go by like a planner, but I do have a calendar on my fridge. Um, I do have alarm set up on my phone so that I can stay on top of certain things. So if it's regarding my children, having parents at your conference, those are alerts that I put on my phone. Any personal alerts I put on my calendar on the fridge. That way I'm up to date with what I can do and what I can't do. And I also monitor the time so that I have breaks in between everything so that I'm not overworking myself. And what about you, Nubella? Very similar. The, the phone alerts have become my best friend, something that I'd never used to use before, but I had to incorporate that. Um, I always was a big planner and I had a ca calendar planners. But one thing that I had to do a little bit differently is allow myself um, the flexibility of being able to change things depending on what was going on. And the advice I would give to everyone is really to think about what's going to work for you. Whereas I used to be able to work out in the evening and that just wasn't something that worked with everything else that was going on. So I had to shift and uh, shift it to the mornings. So just being flexible and noticing what works in one week and what you may have to tweak um, and give yourself that grace to be able to do that as you kind of go on. Now, I like that you say, do what works for you. Uh, in this world today, we often try to copy what someone else is mm -hmm. scheduling, maybe what may work for someone else. Okay, what advice can you give to people who are unconventional in that way? Because there are some people who work overnight, who is more, who are more of um, a night owl instead of a morning person, and maybe they they like going to work out at night. Right. Maybe they like going to work out really early in the mornings but that type of routine may not so much work for them. Mm -hmm. um, people are now more than ever getting depressed and it's getting harder to pull themselves out of it. I mean, people are seeing therapists, but I noticed that when we have this time alone with ourselves, that we can easily get into our minds and into our own thoughts and stay there in that negative space. So like, have you seen what's happening to others and if so, what advice do you think that you can give that will help them get through this trying time? For me, it's been really um, critical to start my day off right. Um, waking up and, and just diving into things doesn't tend to set the best foundation for me. And I think it probably would hold true for many others too. So getting up and being able to pour into yourself first, you know, whether it's a prayer or meditation or uh, confessions or affirmations, uh, working out, whatever it is that you can do to feed into yourself first before you present yourself to the world, to your children, I, I would advise uh, people take that route. Definitely. So in light yeah. of pouring into yourself, right, I realize that I am in control of my happiness. I can make the decision to be happy that day and no one else can do it for me. So it is important that I make sure that I practice my wellness routine before I start my day. Before I wake up to a screaming baby or crying baby who's really hungry and I have to tend to the baby's needs before I even get a chance to brush my teeth or take a shower, it's important that I wake up earlier and have that time to myself to prepare for my day, to set the tone for the day. And that also sets an example for the baby and my children my, you know, growing up. So 
Jamila, what about yourself? Um, pretty much similar to what Bella stated. Um, I always wake up 45 minutes prior to I wake my children up. You need that time to make a cup of coffee or tea. You have to like meditate, set the day. Um, and also you never know what may occur. So always take time for yourself. Even if you're working on those breaks, make sure you do something that's going to be beneficial to yourself. Um, because oftentimes as mothers, especially we tend to forget about ourselves. Um, so if you have a break and it's a new album out, listen to that album, listen to a podcast. Um, if you, you're feeling low, go do your hair. Um, I walk around the house with a wig on <laughs> because it makes me feel good. So essentially doing anything that makes you feel good, um, always try to find that time in your schedule to do so. Now, did you ladies always feel like uh, you were being supported in trying to practice self-care? Or did you ever feel um, alone, like maybe misunderstood in your journey through parenthood and then trying to juggle your moods and juggle taking care of yourselves and maybe people didn't understand that or they weren't necessarily doing what they could to help you in your eyes, but maybe it was just bad communication, who knows? Well, I've, I've been fortunate. I've been very blessed to have a, a really good support system. Um, we actually live in a, a three family home where I have my mother and my father-in-law. Uh, and then with having so many kids, you, you automatically need a support system. So my husband and I are very good at making sure that the other person has the time that they need to be able to be present when you're needed. So fortunately, I've had a good support system, but that was something that had to be kind of communicated and, and set and laid down. Uh, rules needed to be <laughs> laid down and a, a foundation needed to be, be laid down so we both knew what we needed. Right. It just I'm, doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm definitely in a similar situation where um, I live directly across the street from my dad. So having that support right there is just, hey dad, I need a break. I have to take a nap, you know, take the kids for a walk for me. Um, sometimes we do feel bad because we feel like we're taking away time from my children, but it's all about if they're still asleep, that's not taking away time from them. You know, you make time for yourself and, and it makes you feel good overall. Yeah, so I like that we all spoke about having that support system in place because sometimes we think that we have to do it all. And in this world, uh, you know, media may put out there that we have to be, you know, superwoman. But I'm glad that we all have that support system in place. And that's important for you guys out there to understand that. And when we come back from break, we'll talk more about motherhood and self-care during quarantine. Do you remember our first group photo? This is it. Smiles all around, even though we were all nervous. Who could have imagined that our first weekend together would soon turn into a lifetime of memories? You're an amazing young man. Your brothers and sisters really look up to you. They're a big brother. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. I just, I ain't never felt so much love before in my life. And thank you so much for joining us on The Diara Show. We're here with Jamila Murphy and Nubella Allison. And we're gonna get right back into talking about motherhood and self-care during quarantine. Now I noticed when the pandemic first started that it was easy for me to relax because I had nowhere to go and New York was shut down. So it was important for me to not try to do too much and go all over the place. And during that time, I became a little less productive at first in the beginning. And I think that some people had a hard time with getting back into a routine, getting back into being productive, because our goals change. 
right? So what do you ladies think about that time when it was easy to be a little less productive? Did you have to find the strength within yourself to still push on? Uh, well, personally, I, I didn't really receive that, um, that moment where it was calm. Like when the pandemic first <laughs> happened, it was extremely chaotic for me right. Right. Uh, because I have, I have, a, a, I have two children. They're at both in elementary school, and it was okay. We're gonna start homeschooling on Monday. I had to go out right. and buy equipment. I had to become a homeschool teacher, so I had to put in those extra hours. I had to juggle. I have to buy a printer. I, I've never worked from home before, so it was a lot um hence why i started uh scheduling things um but then i also realized that i'm doing so much school and work that i'm forgetting that we still have to have fun like we still have to incorporate different things um so that's how it was for me so it it's now just getting calm <laughs> and what about you new bella well, I, it was very similar because everything happened so suddenly that it was this kind of uh, just frantic state initially where you had to figure out what am I doing? You know, schools kind of closed abruptly. There wasn't the whole virtual online thing set up. So you were very much it. So things just ha there was not a calm in the <laughs> in the beginning. There was not. But throughout that and you know when the trend when it became apparent that this was the new norm uh i realized quickly okay this is what it's going to be <laughs> we have to make the best out of it and doing a lot of what jamila said we made it fun you know you take breaks you you sing in the kitchen when you <laughs> you do you do little things to just kind of um enjoy the opportunity to be around your kids but to also make it light and fun for you so you remember that um, you know, it's not all bad. There's hope and there are positive things. Great. So I know that now uh, it is being discussed whether or not the schools will open and will the teachers go back to school, take the vaccine, what's going on. So what is the school situation like now? Because we're months and months later from when the pandemic first started. So are your kids uh, going to still be homeschooled or will they be going back to school? Well, for me, um, we had to make a decision and it was, that was, it was kind of hard for me to, to come up with the correct decision because like I said, I have kids in every sort of age bracket. Um, and right now we have two of the older kids that are doing hybrid school. So they go for maybe two days and they're home for two days, The two younger kids, our home. I didn't start off that way. I did send them back, but I, I realized shortly after that wasn't the best um, plan for me uh, or for them. So they're home with me now doing virtual learning. And I think we just have to kind of take it month by month and see what's working, what's not working, um, and see the situation with the vaccine and, and what the next steps are. Yeah. And what about you, Jamila? So being that my kids are both um, in elementary school, I was very concerned about them, like not washing their hands after playing. So it was 100% virtual learning since the pandemic started. Um, and we just learned to work with it. I mean, I'm a nurse, I'm the principal. <laughs> I've become the gym teacher. Um, so we try to incorporate, we still try to incorporate like the school and I'm still assisting them like I normally would. But now I'm just a little bit more hands-on with them, um, whereas, there's extended lessons at home after school to make sure that they are understanding things. And then we work out together um, because I want for them to remain fit and active. But then I also have them doing things where they're more independent um, instead of me having to consistently tell them, do this, do that. I'm seeing that my children are actually becoming extremely independent and it's amazing because I don't have to tell them to do A, B, and C. So they're following what I'm doing and, and applying it to their lives as well. Now, with all that's going on, you guys took on the task of starting your own business. Wow. So please tell me a little bit about what your businesses are about. Because that's going over and beyond. We're just adding things to our business. 
free time on our hands, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, as I sh stress, like the importance of doing stuff that is going to make you happy, um, where I started something called uh, His Muse um, NYC, where it is a loungewear company. We sell pajamas, lingerie, swimwear, um, and also loungewear. And as I stated earlier in the interview, I like to feel good and look good. And even if I have to be in the house, I want to throw in some comfy slides, some something nice and comfortable. And I just knew that a lot of mothers were like not brushing their hair, not putting on makeup. And I'm just like, let's feel good. Let's let me do something that would help them feel good. You know. So if that's wearing a silk pajama set and some comfy fuzzy slides, then let me do that at affordable prices. And it works out for me and for other moms and other women. Yes, I love that it's okay to feel great about yourself and look great because it's easy to just throw on, you know, your face mask and then you have your bonnet or a head scarf on. You could just throw on a hat. No one would know the difference that you think, what the heck? You know, it's it's the middle of the winter. You're bundled up anyway. Why even try? But no, it's, it's a good thing to like look good because then you sometimes you feel good. It helps. It definitely helps. Yeah. And then what about you, Novella? I understand you started your business also. Yes. So, pandemic, or was it before the hand? No, it, it, it's very strange because I had this business, Career Relations Network, which often offers uh, career services, resume writing, um, and interview preparation. I had this business uh, prior to the pandemic, but I really kind of put it on the side and wasn't giving it the attention that it needed. And then during the pandemic, I made a, a really big and bold decision to invest more time in that and, and flip it and put everything else on the back burner because I saw the need. People were struggling, people were out of work, people were looking for solutions to help them in, with their job search and um, looking for solutions that were practical and affordable as well. Uh, so I thought, you know, I have a lot of insight I've been in uh, HR and recruiting for many years, I could really help people and impact their uh, search and them pursuing their purpose. So it was a no brainer for me to do that, uh, especially in this time when so many people uh, needed that help. Definitely. So I like, I like that you guys are helping people and you're not only thinking about yourselves, you're thinking about people around you. So I want to know, how do you unravel after doing all of this and taking care of your business, and your children, and your professional life? How do you unwind? Do you have a glass of wine? Do you practice meditation? Uh, tell me more about that. Great. So uh, for me, I tend, like, I, I love to shop. So this is like, I'm not <laughs> I'm shopping for myself. I just like, at once six o'clock hit, I'm shopping for vendors and trying to like do anything that's gonna promote my business. And then after that, I um, work out um, three days out of the week to just promote overall uh, health. Um, I like to light candles, aromatherapy candles. I dim my lights down um, around like seven o'clock every day. Um, I like to bake. I like anything that I can incorporate in my children where it's calm after after this. Yeah. <laughs> we work out together, we cook together, um, we light candles, and it's just a calm setting. So that's really how I unwind. Yeah. And I think when you incorporate the children, like you said, with your cooking and you know, your music playing, your baking, that helps you right. not feel guilty as well when you have to spend time away from the kids to do your work. I like that any way that you can, you make sure that you spend time with the children doing something fun. So they see you in that happy space. Right. Know? So uh, Nubella, what about you? How do you unwind uh, daily or at the end of the day? Or what do you do special for yourself? Well, similar to what Jamila said, it's not really um, relaxing in a sense of plugging out, but really plugging into something that you enjoy. She right. enjoys shopping. I enjoy making things you know, making jewelry, uh, crafting with the kids, baking, uh, those types of things that we can do together. Um, and, and then some things that we can do separately, but the tapping into my creative side is something that kind of balances me out. And um, I, I find time to do that. Um, I make sure to carve out time to do that with, uh, for myself and with the kids. 
Great. So I'm hoping this episode will help you see that we all are relatable in some way and we can be all friends in our heads. <laughs> yeah. So what advice would you give to moms who are struggling because maybe what's going on in their personal lives will affect their daily routines, can affect their business, their professional lives and um, how, you know, how they mother, how they parent. What advice can you give when, you know, those trying times happen? Because honestly, I don't see this uh, quarantine ending for at least the next year, maybe over a year. We, we don't know what's going to happen. Times are unpredictable. Even before the summer when in the news we would see, uh, you know, all oh, this pandemic will end by the summer. I would think, what? How can we know this? Are we that, uh, hmm, we're that intelligent. We, we can think that we can predict, oh, the pandemic will be over this time and this day. No, it's yeah. still going on right now. Mm -hmm. So people who thought it would be over by this time and that, you know, they may think it's really challenging for them. What advice can you give? Um, I would just say pray daily. Um, I yeah. pray all the time. Whenever I'm feeling low, I pray, um, I meditate. And um, once you're a happy mom, your children are going to be happy. Right. So if you are stressed out, that's going to go on to your children. So just try to remain positive and happy and take breaks um, if you can, um, just to sit and think and, and, and talk and journalize anything. Great. Thank you. What about yourself, uh, Nubella? Yeah, I agree with all of that. Prayer is so important. I start my day with that and end the, end the day with that for myself and my kids. We do a devotional. Um, I highly recommend that. It's so good to be able to connect on that level um, as a family. So I would definitely advise that as my number one tip. Um, and then also really get to a place where you have patience with yourself and peace in the process. Kind of check off the things that you can control and and do those things and then lay the rest in prayer uh, and, yeah, and just leave it there because uh, you know as moms we tend to be kind of we want to control the situation and there are some things that are out of our control so do what you can and what is within your control and then leave the rest um up to god to handle and, and that's my advice <laughs> so Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a new day when self-care is very important, okay? And we must remember that if we're not happy, how are we gonna help make someone else happy? If we can't pour into ourselves, how are we gonna have anything to pour into someone else, even our own children? So just like that phone that you need to charge, right? You also have to make sure that we are intentionally charging our own batteries, okay? On a regular basis. And I would like to thank these one, women, Jamila and uh, Nubella, for joining us today on The Diara Show. And be on the lookout for the next episode. And again, thanks again for everyone joining us. See you next time. Ain't no living life than my pseudo. Ain't no living life than my pseudo. We going out tonight or am I? You know, ain't no bedtime. You grown, spending them dimes so darn. Ain't no living life semi pseudo. Ain't no living life semi pseudo. We going out tonight or am I? You know.